Hello, my lovely more thoughts. Welcome back to my channel. It's Morbid Gamer here, back with another video and back with something a little bit more informative. I've been doing YouTube for a very long time now and I didn't realize that until like recently. So in all that time, I really feel like I have learned a lot of things. And so this video is definitely geared to people who are maybe new, want a little insight, need some information, or maybe some of you have actually been doing this for a while, but you can pick pick up some different tips and tricks on this video. You never know. So strap in because this is going to be quite a long video and there should be timestamps down below so it can help you look for what it is that you're maybe more interested in learning about. Out the gate, I kind of just want to list off a couple of things that I use kind of like my setup and a bit of equipment. I do work off of two PCs, two different computers. One I use primarily for gaming and the other one I use to record all my videos. The reason that I do that is because it takes a load off both computers just to have one do one task and the other one do another task. And I know that's not gonna be for everyone, especially cause this can be a pretty pricey setup, but it's definitely helpful in the long run. So if you have extra coin, I would definitely look into setting yourself up this way. I am using a Sony A5100 camera with the kit lens. I'm using a capture card to capture obviously what the camera is seeing. I do have two Elgato key lights so you can kind of better see me. To record my audio, I have the Blue Yeti microphone. It's a USB microphone. If I'm wearing hats, most of the times I will have AirPods, but I do have my lovely Skull Candy Venue headphones. They're like noise canceling. They're like the best when it comes to editing, playing my games. I like love them. They're so good. To record my videos on my recording PC, I do use OBS because it is free 99 and we like free around here. And honestly, it does the job and it's a really good program. To record my audio separately from my video, I use Audacity and I do suggest recording your audio separately. It is free 99 also, which is also good and it's a great program. To edit my videos, I use Adobe Premiere Pro. I think it's the best but that's just because I've known it for so long. I took classes in high school for it and it's all I've ever known. And I think it's super easy, but that's just probably me. This video will still work for you regardless, just in case you use something different. First on the list, we're gonna tackle OBS. We got a bit of an inception thing going on, but that's usually how this goes when you want to do a bit of a tutorial on OBS. So bear with me. I wanna show you guys my settings. And what we're gonna be looking at is output generally. You you don't have to have your bitrate this high because I am recording on a separate computer. I have it set this high because I can. It's all that this computer is doing right now. If you're working on a one PC setup, you might want to lower this. Play around and adjust the numbers according to you and what it is that you're working with. You also want to adjust the recording path just so you're sending this off to your external hard drive, particular folder. I don't know. I don't know what you guys have going on, but I do send this to my PC, to a specific folder and where my videos go. Next you're going to want to play with recording quality. I do have it at indistinguishable quality, large file sizes. So that means my files will be pretty big, but that doesn't always have to be the case. It doesn't have to be your case. Again, this is all kind of like what it is that suits you better. Recording format, I usually go with .mov. You can go another route. You can go .mp4, but I just stick to .mov. And because I have a graphics card on this computer, I do have my encoder set to NVENC because then my graphics card is taking up a lot of that like power of having to record and encode all of that stuff. If you have a graphics card, you should do that. If you don't, you probably won't see this, but I still definitely suggest you get a graphics card. It is ideal. Next, we're gonna go down to video and uh, my base canvas resolution is 1920 by 1080. So I just leave it at that. But if you are struggling a bit, I would suggest turning down the aspect ratio probably to like 1280 to 720 and then downscale 
filter, I should have this set a little differently. But again, mess around with this and see what you like best. I have it set at 60 frames per second because I know that I can and the computer can handle it, but you can always turn this down to like even 29 I used to do in my old PC so that it's like almost 30 frames per second, but it was 29. I have different scenes for different things. Like if I just want to record my camera like I am right now with you guys, I, I hit cam and just hit record. This is like full screen, just me talking. If I want to do gameplay, which I usually do because I play The Sims 4, I do have my Elgato hooked up to my game PC. So it records everything over here. So as you guys can see, I'm now recording The Sims, but we won't go into the game just yet. <laughs> it's not that type of video. You'll add a bunch of sources. This is something that you should already know. Or if you don't know this, again, look this up for a bunch of beginner tutorials on OBS on YouTube. There's a ton and they're way more in depth than I could ever be. As you guys can see, I already have opened Audacity and it's recording because you guys can see the audio waves. Now we're gonna have to picture this a little in our minds, but if I was about to sit down and start recording on this computer, what I would do normally is turn on the desktop audio because I have it off and turn on my mic audio because I have it off also. I will hit start recording. Right now it says stop recording because I'm rec recording currently. It would technically be off and I would click start recording. On Audacity, I would also click start recording. This is that red button over here. And then what I would do is sync the audio. That's the first thing that you want to do. So usually I will just say mic sync, one, two, three, and then I'll clap because what we're doing when we're clapping is kind of like how you see in movies, the little like, forget what that thing's called, but that's to help sync up audio because people record that separately. It is just always ideal to do that. And so voila, we have our audio set. Now you want to turn it off though on, on your OBS because then you'll have overlapping audio. You don't want that. Okay, so now we'll just record. And then our game audio is being recorded separately as well. So you always have that customization to be able to mess around with the audio however it is you want. It's on different tracks, so that's ideal. Quickly forgot to mention, but that is NVIDIA Broadcast. NVIDIA Broadcast is a newer program. However, it won't work on all PCs, so just make sure that you have like the right specs for it, the right like graphics card for it. I think it definitely takes specific graphics cards more on the newer end, but this is such a lifesaver. It works for your microphone, speakers, and camera. It has a noise removal that's really good. It's still a little glitchy, a little patchy here and there, but for the most part, this really helps me out because I have heaters turned on, air conditioner turned on sometimes, we have neighbors who walk down the stairs and that can get pretty noisy. And what this does is that it filters that out so that all you hear is my voice right now. The next thing that I like to do once this is like the recording's all done and over and I, so I have this turned on and it's set up so that you can then go into OBS. And when it goes to your mic audio, you can then either choose your actual microphone, which is mine is the Yeti or NVIDIA broadcast filter, whatever you want to call it. It. So I have it set to that. Also, you'll notice like the blurring effect in the background is also being caused by the NVIDIA broadcast. You can do many different things with this, but this is so cool. So I can even turn up the strength on the blurring in the background. As you guys can see, it's a lot stronger than before and I can turn it down and it gets less intense. I kind of like it a little less intense. It's not as crazy. You can do background replacements. This one needs a little bit more work, but like, Hey, this is free. Whole just background removals. And like it can auto frame your, like it'll follow you, you know? Oh, that's so creepy. So it's a really good tool. I like to use it a lot. So if you can, I would check this out. So usually I will come over here to Audacity. We are done. Got my audio. And we're gonna go ahead and hit export. We're gonna do a WAV file. You could do MP3. I'm just used to doing WAV, so I don't know. I'm gonna call this my videos and I'm cutting this up into different parts. So I'm just gonna organize this and call this my videos part two. Keep it organized. We know that it's in order and hit save and it should export. It doesn't take too long. So I do have a designated area where my video, my OBS videos go and this is this folder. So the last video I recorded, I will also rename so that I know where it belongs to which audio, you know, which 
order these videos go also that's just ideal to just keep everything organized so let me name this one my videos too because it corresponds to my videos to the audio file next thing that i like to do once this is like the recording's all done and over and i kind of got a gist of where this video is going i will then take a thumbnail picture because i like to put myself in my thumbnail pictures just so people know who i am recognize this face and be like oh morbid uploaded a new video there she is in the thumbnail so this is game capture it is a program by elgato it's something you need to download when you use your cam link or when you use your capture card from elgato so it's currently being used my cam link so i can't see myself but generally speaking you would see yourself right here and down here it says screenshot and what i like to do is just pose in front of the camera whatever do my thing and then snap some screenshots and there you go i have my thumbnail picture <laughs> here are some like test shots just so you guys can see me being like yeah extra and i can see all the different types of screenshots and then i'll pick one that i like eventually so right now you're getting a little behind the scenes how it is that i transfer my footage and everything that is that i've been working on from over here when i'd probably even transfer some of my like thumbnail pictures into my external hard drive which it's this thing right here i definitely would suggest this i will leave this link down below on where i got it which was from amazon but i will connect this external hard drive into this computer put all my files in here obviously so i can get it from my recording pc so i can send it to my gameplay slash editing computer she's like my main pc this is where we get most of the job done she's mostly like the recording slash streaming pc but we still love her though she puts in a lot of work still now that we have everything recorded our video our audio we took our thumbnail pictures we have everything organized and we've transferred it to the second computer what is the next thing we do you might think it's editing it's not we're not we're not going there yet we still got a couple more things to do before we get to the editing part who said youtubing wasn't a job so the first thing that i have to do and this is like most of the times because my file sizes end up being humongous they end up being really big this video alone is 10 gigabytes that is really massive and that is really big file size my adobe will crash or just won't load up a file size that big it just won't so using adobe media encoder is what i like to use so what the encoder will do is i'll drop in the video but i change it to a h.264 this is a great setting for youtube to upload to youtube but it's always been really helpful and i've always noticed that my videos just upload a lot faster and then i will press this start queue and then it will encode it for me it takes kind of a while sometimes depending on how big the the file sizes of the video but over here we have the encoded complete file and comparatively from this one to this one this is a lot smaller this is a 4.39 gigabyte video now so it went ahead and just kind of like compressed the video and made it a lot smaller adobe media encoder obviously you have to pay for but there is free options there's handbrake handbrake is 100 free i used to use this a lot but ever since i got adobe media encoder i've just been using that one but i think what i don't like about this one it changes the frame rate to 30 frames per second so i just don't really use it as much anymore now that that's done you're probably like now can we edit still not yet no we can't the next step is actually changing our audio files to sound a lot better a lot more crisp give it a little bit of a boomier sound just because the blue yeti microphone is great but it's not like the most professional sounding at the end of the day so we want to give the audio a bit more life and how i do that is i have a Audacity, which is the same program we use to record on my recording PC, I use to add some effects to my audio, make it sound nicer. So we'll import the audio and then I already have it set as like a plugin, like a macro, I think it's what it's called. So then I will just go to my plugin slash macro, whatever you want to call it. I named it edits and then it will apply all the things that I needed to apply in one go. So it's kind of like go, go, go. So it's applying a noise reduction, compressor, bass and treble and this doesn't take too long usually i'm gonna go ahead and leave my settings and what all this is applying so if you guys want to use it you can but i'd play around i'd play 
play around with audacity or find some videos also on youtube that help make your audio sound a little bit more professional a little bit like better and there it's done so now what i do is usually just export the wave file back into that same folder but usually i'll probably just mark it as like number two of that file and hit save and then i'll export there so here are those two new files and i can identify them because they have that like two like this is it's like part two of my audios and now you're probably like now can we edit no we still got one more thing to do to the audio files okay bear with me last thing last thing we gotta do and that is the cn levelator i really love this program and it was introduced to me by the odd ones out he's an animator i'm sure you guys know who he is but he was talking about it in one of his videos it makes his low audio levels sound normal so it brings them up and it makes his really like loud audio levels and brings them down so it's kind of like level right so that's what i really like about this program and it's also free who would have thunk <laughs> again we love free around here so i will go ahead and drop both of these two into the level later that's all you got to do literally just like drop them in and then it'll do it for you and also what i like about this is once it's done it'll drop it into your folder your same folder now i've already gone ahead and done that so i'm not gonna wait for this for this video and voila they'll pop into your folder so now you should have like a bunch of audio files i can always distinguish the ones that i'm gonna use because it'll say output dot wave i'll definitely put up a side by side right now of like the raw audio file versus like the edited nicer version so you guys can see the difference and like how that like ends up working the in-game stuff is really bad i'm so disappointed the in-game stuff is really bad i'm so disappointed now it's time to edit our video now that we've gotten that all out of the way you guys we can finally get into premiere pro which is what i used like i said in the beginning premiere pro is probably not ideal for everyone just because i think there is a monthly subscription now i wouldn't know so there are ways around that, but if you can find a different route, I would definitely suggest Premiere Pro. It's a really good program. Anyways, when I open up Premiere Pro, I always use the same, same, same project. I never start a new project. I know a lot of people like to start a new project, name it according to the video and everything, but I always just use the same one. So this, I call it my gameplay project. The first thing that I do when I edit my videos, usually I have the last video that I recorded and edited. So I'll go ahead and with A on my keyboard, it will highlight everything up to the mouse of where you're clicking so everything is highlighted as you guys can see this way onward so it's highlighted and i just press delete and it deletes everything including this i could do that too so we're starting blank and brand new but just because of the sake for this video i've already gotten and edited so we will be dissecting it kind of in a way but after that i've deleted everything i will drop in all of my like items all of these i will drop them into premiere pro and i'll drop in the audio in here as well so it's already in here so i don't have to do it again if you go ahead and add it to your timeline as you guys can see i'm getting ready to clap that's what we did earlier and that's me queuing up the audio to be synced so i'll grab my audio file that corresponds to this video and you guys can already see the wavelength so what i'll do is just cut it up really close to that first wavelength and then the same thing for the other one using this letter c on your keyboard it's like kind of a shortcut over here this razor tool i'll cut it up also the audio audio file and then line it up and then down here using this this little scrolly thing down here you can zoom in and zoom out as you want like this is me zooming out this is me zooming in as far as i can go so i will line up these two audio files and it looks like i cut it up just right look at me go so i'll just play both in my sync one two three and it sounds really weird because it's two audios overlapping. And I noticed the clapping is just like spot on too. Okay, so that's perfect. I don't even have to go in and really alter anything. So once I've done that, I will go ahead and click on the blue bar because you see this is connected and we don't want that because it's going to add on extra work that you don't need. So what you'll do is right click on it. You'll go up here and you'll see where it says unlink. I'm going to unlink it because what we're going to do now is link all three items together. And then I just go ahead and link the three. So now they're all connected. And what Whatever I do to one, I do to all. So now, after that's linked, 
it's game time because now all that's left to do is basically cut out all the dead air you see down here in the wavelengths they're like there's nothing going on it's just dead air me probably just preparing for this video as you can see and then finally boom i see my first audio waves this is where we start to cut a lot of the footage in the video so using c on your keyboard that brings up the razor tool it's like a shortcut i will start to like boom cut out a lot of these giant gaps and using a on your keyboard i can like drag it so like i just did cut this up using a i'll grab this clip and drag it next to this one and then i'll cut up this little dead air space and so on and so on Magical just creatures. flows a lot better people don't have to wait and sit through the dead air and the ums and all those fattening things that are on your video that you don't need so that's we're gonna go ahead and do that all throughout this long footage and usually these take me about two hours hours to about 48 hours to finish depending on how long the length of the footage is but time is money so i try to get it done as quick as i can so as you can see here my example you could see a bunch a bunch of cuts that's because it's already cut up and i've gone and done the job next thing that i want to do is edit the audio and you're like we've already edited the audio a bunch of times what are we doing now i promise you it's actually not that crazy so there are two different audio bars lines whatever you want to call them i don't know what they're called <laughs> but there's two of them there's the blue one there's the green one well, the blue one is the audio in-game stuff and the green one is me talking so over here this is really neat about adobe is you can actually set one of these this is audio one we'll just call the blue one audio one is that you can go and down here where it says track keyframes you can go to volume and you can actually adjust the volume throughout the whole video and then drag this meter up or down depending on how high I want the in-game audio to be. And usually I don't want it to be too loud. So I actually set it maybe to like a negative three so that it's not overbearing and it's not like this the loudest thing. And my voice is louder than the in-game stuff, but enough so that you guys can hear it also. So we don't want it too low. We don't want it too loud. And you guys can hear the audio right now. You can hear the in-game stuff, the in-game music. So that might be a little too loud. But yeah, I mess around with it and I suggest you guys mess around with too and find like a nice little level. A good little note though, is that you should oh, always stick the to the negative six negative 12 area you never want to go up here to the zero and you never want to stray below that because then your audio is just all over the place and that's the big thing of why we already edited the audio with the level later and that's why we're going in here and messing with the audio a little bit more because i always notice people's audios are all over the place and it's like guys fix your audio sometimes it's too loud and sometimes it's too low like this is perfect like it just helps you level it out so that's not all over the place and that's my like big pet peeve with videos sometimes it's all over the place and you just need to fix that audio please so negative it's six so to negative so 12 good. but i will also mess around with the audio too which is my voice again track keyframes volume and then it lets me either go higher or go lower but i think i usually go to negative negative three is where i like to stick around so it's not too loud because if i think if i were at a zero it might be too loud yeah now we're starting to get into like higher like negative six a little louder than that so i stick to like negative three is where i like to stick Day. I think it's a good happy medium. So then that's that. That's the audio. And then you also, once you're done with the audio, go back to to clip keyframes. So yeah, then you can mess around and move this around. If, otherwise, you can't for some reason. All right, we're done with that. Now what's next? All we gotta do is probably add some effects. So we gotta add some like footage. We gotta add some pictures, you know, here and there, zooms, special effects, audio effects, whatever it may be. Now it's time to like play around with the footage and add those extra like little spicy things is what i like to call it so here's a little shortcut that maybe some of you might not know about but i hope you guys do and that is okay let me just say i have my intro here i've cut up everything and i just want to add this in but like how am i going to add it in without moving all this off to the side and so here's a nice little shortcut you grab this and then you hold control on your keyboard and when you do that you'll see these little arrows right here and it'll basically like push everything to the side and add this video in for 
for you. And that's so neat. It's such a lifesaver. And there you go. And I put my intro Hello, in and move everything off to the side. Perfect. As you guys can see here, I do have an effect yeah. on this. Like you see the little twinkling Welcome things to that I downloaded all for free off of YouTube. So really quick, YouTube has a lot of green screen effects. So if you just look up green screen, like I looked up green screen hearts and these are free. That's why I like to use these. And like, you'll find a lot. You just kind of scroll a little bit, but here's a playlist. These are like, this is green screen lightning, which is cool. Sometimes you'll get me like KO. Okay. A knockout. I don't know what I would use this for, but it depends on what you're making. So not John Cena. Point is you can find a lot of effects. You just got to search for what it is you need. And then if you do right click on the video, it says, it says copy video URL. So you go ahead and copy it. And what I like to use is YT MP3, which don't let it fool you. It does MP3 audio files, but it also will convert a video for you. So if I wanted this effect, I will paste it in here, convert, and then I'll let you download the video. So then you can download it and have a bunch of effects in your arsenal. And I won't go too deep into this, but if you're dealing with green screen things, you'll definitely need to use the ultra key. Like, let me just show you if I remove this effect, it's green, right? You can see the sparkly things this is what it looks like if i type over here ultra key drop it into this and then and over here using the eyedropper tool i can click on this green and voila now we just got the effects and so now i've gone ahead and i probably have added like effects I've added transitions where there needs to be transitions text if i need it you know all these things i've added and like my video is almost ready the last thing I'd like to do is add in some music because once everything's cut up, I like to see hmm, where do we need some music? Because sometimes you do for speed builds. Sometimes you do for create some videos. Sometimes you do just for your intro. So I like to go and download non-copyright music. I have a whole playlist already for myself, but audio library is where I go. It's a bunch of free non-copyrighted music. And I just like to listen to some and see what is more my vibe. And then I'll save them to a playlist. And when I need some music, I'll listen to it. And then I'll grab the link to the video convert it, download the mp3, and then just go ahead and add it to my video. So I'll put it in a separate like audio file somewhere down here, somewhere down low. So I know, hey, this is where the music goes. And you can kind of hear there's the Wii music. Be your normal, typical let's play. I think we're gonna definitely- Okay, now we gotta talk about exporting your video that you just finished, your masterpiece is done. Now what do you do? You wanna go ahead and come up here to your file and click export media and then using that same format that we use when we were encoding i'm gonna do h.64 and i titled it bone hill does so title it whatever it is that you know works for you you know it just tells you this is that video so you do and then i don't mess around with anything over here and make sure export video and export audio use man maximum render quality and here down here if you guys are doing a speed build just a little FYI, if you have Adobe Premiere Pro, you might wanna do frame blending, just because if you're doing a high speed video, which I only suggest ever going like 600% like speed, if you're like condensing that video to like speed it up, max do like 600, cause it can be very jarring to people, um, but use frame blending. It helps to blend the frames together, hence why it's called frame blending. Um, and it's not as like, so like, skippy and jumpy it kind of has a little bit more of a flow to it so just in case you're doing that i would suggest that but we're not doing that so we'll do frame sampling and then go ahead and explore it and as you guys can see the video isn't as as big as it used to be. I think this is 1500 megabytes, not too bad, not at all. And now I hit export and wait for it to export. Sometimes it could be as low as like five minutes and then sometimes it could take up to like 30 to sometimes even an hour if your project's even longer. So we're getting towards the end, you guys, but next I like to now make the thumbnail because the video's fresh in my mind. It's like, okay, what did we just do? What should be the highlight point? What is the thing that attracts viewers to this video? Cause your video can be bomb.com everything is like set right everything's edited perfectly you have all this like cool stuff but no like thumbnail that's really gonna catch people's eyes because that's kind of how that algorithm works now so you have to have something very alluring something very eye-catching almost like clickbaity without being clickbaity and the program that i like to use is photoshop we just stick in the adobe family man here i've opened it up and what i like to do is create a whole new file but they even have it set to like 
YouTube. So I like just click on the HDTV 1080 one because it's 1920 by 1080 and I will hit create. And then you'll get a blank canvas, which I usually just unlock that layer. And I will drop in one of like my more favorite uh, pictures that I took. Something that's really like, oh my God, what is that facial expression she's making? <laughs> so let's just go ahead and say we pick this one. Um, what I like to do is just kind of, and this is just really basic and really quick Photoshop tutorial. I think you guys if you don't know Photoshop at all, you're a beginner, don't know or don't know anything, definitely look up a video to help you out. But this is, again, more for intermediate people. Um, with the M tool, just gonna go ahead and just surround myself with it. Click Control C for copy, and then I'll just paste it. I'll just paste myself again. So I can just come in and erase the area around myself. Then you can also use the quick selection tool that will kind of just quickly, it's not perfect, but it will quickly like grab the area around you. And it grabbed my hat, so I don't want that. Using the lasso tool and just take that off and then delete and we almost have it perfect we still gotta sprucing it up a bit there you go and then you can add backgrounds to it grab really quick from the internet you can add characters from your game what you use take screenshots add them in i like to add a border sometimes around myself so double clicking on this layer go to stroke and then right here you can mess around with the size of the outline so you can make it bigger just to kind of highlight your Yourself, like hey I'm in here shoot sometimes I like to make myself even bigger in the thumbnail just kind of like exciting like I'm ginormous in here like hey guys I just turn myself to the side like oh my god <laughs> that's hilarious it's actually pretty funny what am I honestly so astonished about I don't know but click on this thumbnail I have stock images sometimes already queued up for me to use like arrows <laughs> people love arrows I guess they're kind of eye-catching especially if they're a really bright color like look at my face oh and if you double click again on that layer you can do like a drop shadow just to make it look a little bit more stand out. I have a bunch of Sims stuff saved already. So I'll just come in here, maybe grab the Sims logo. Gotta add that in there. Too big, too big. Hold on. Double click, maybe add a drop shadow on that too, just so it stands out against the backdrop. Or if I'm talking about something specific, shoot, maybe I wanna put the Sims, actual Sims like box art in there. See, it just depends on what it is you wanna do, guys. So um, but play around, mess around, make your thumbnails just pop and like make them unique find your own style and whatever works to get people to click on that video that's very important here this comes in so much handy when editing thumbnails and in photoshop and just working in photoshop if it's gonna be a big project usually i'll use this but sometimes just using the mouse is just straight to the point and it gets the job done too but i really like using this and i would suggest it there are some cheaper versions out there on amazon and i've used the cheaper ones and they're really good but i just like having like the screen in front of me and seeing what i'm drawing so that's why i upgraded to this but yeah walk em one love it last thing to talk about and bring up probably has to do with productivity and like how it is that you just sit yourself down and can edit for like hours on end and that can get pretty hard. So I think in the beginning, just give yourself some time to just really get accustomed to it. Have break times. You can work for 25 to 30 minutes and then take a small little break and then go at it again because editing can be very, very, very repetitive, can be very time consuming. It's not like the hardest thing to do, at least not for me, but it definitely just gets tiresome just because of the repetitiveness that it has. You have to do. I also like to set my phone on do not disturb because then I'll just start getting notifications from my phone, messages, phone calls, and like I don't need that now when I'm trying to like speed through this, right? If you're watching this and you're new to content creating, Sims YouTubing, or like anything, just game making gameplay videos for YouTube, I would say in the beginning it's a little weird listening to yourself over and over again speaking. It can be a little cringy, but trust me, that will fade. I don't even hear myself anymore. I feel like I'm editing a second person. Last and final, final tip, I swear, is just to have fun with it because you just kind of want to produce something that you're going to be proud of, that you're going to have fun with. So always keep in mind to have fun. The videos that I'm most proud of is where the ones that I really have had the most fun with. And you, it shows and like in the end, I look back at them and I'm really, really, really proud of them. Sometimes it's really easy to forget that this isn't just a job. It's also something that you really love to do. So there you go and there you have it, guys. 
that's all I have for you today. I hope, hope, hope that you learned something new, that you took something away from this and that it helped you out. If you have any questions, leave it down below. Also, I'll leave all my socials so you know where to find me. My name is Morrie Gamer almost on anything and everything. But yeah, I'll see you in my next video and have fun simming and have fun content creating. Bye, you guys. Bye.